Welcome back to another Sons of the Forest building guide. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build a waterfall base, but not just any waterfall base. We are going to be building up on these cliff sides. We're also going to be building on top of the waterfall, and we're going to be building a floating base on top of this water. It'll probably all be connected with zip lines, but we'll have to see as we go. The biggest issue we're going to have building this waterfall base is going to be these cliff sides. So normally we can't actually build on these. So we're going to have to do some fancy stuff with struts. Another issue that we're going to have is when trying to build on top of this waterfall, things are going to be a little weird. The ground isn't very even. I'm not sure if we want to build in this small little space. It doesn't have a lot of room on the top to work with. So we may end up building on this feature right here, which is extremely unlevel and difficult to build on. So we definitely will encounter some major difficulties here. If you end up liking the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more Sons of the Forest content. But let's go ahead and get right into it. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is clear out all of these nearby cannibals. <laughs> Next, let's set up a tent so that we can hibernate for the summer. We need to go ahead and sleep until winter. And now that it's winter, I'm going to fork a new save file and I have to quit out and reload the game so that the ice or the water will freeze and turn to ice. So now we're all set. It's winter, the water is frozen and we can walk on it. We can go ahead and set up a foundation on this ice to make our floating water base, but we have a serious problem which is we need to find just the right angle to build this base. If we build it too close to the cliff, not only will it be obnoxious how loud that water is all the time, but the other issue is if we want to connect the cliffside houses with zip lines and the angle is too steep, it could cause some serious issues of actually going up and not just flying off and dying every single time. So choosing the exact distance is going to be important. Once you have your foundation laid out, you are pretty much good to go even after the ice melts. Uh, you don't need to put down the floors right now, but one thing that I do want to work on is building the bridges. I'm going to build a bridge on either side, so that way you can cross this lake in the summertime without having to swim. So in this case, let's go ahead and build an arched bridge. To do this, you got to do some fancy stuff. We're going to do this dead center right here, keep it on the grid, and now what we'll do is we'll lift this up with a one-fourth. And now we're going to leave this temporarily while we grab another one-fourth and try to find like that and get it lined up on the grid. Then we can connect that in. Now it'll all stay on the grid and we can go ahead and attach that in right there. And now from here, it should be clockwork. We just add on the half logs right here and right here. Once we get to the edge, we can do this method in order to lift it up correctly to the final height. And that is what we're going to be dealing with. This will be the final length of the arched bridge. I'm only going to arch it to a half size though, but let's go ahead and fill in all the gaps right here. And now we just need to put the half logs the whole way across. And now I just need to put the full size logs across the top. And now we have something like this. I'm going to go ahead and put on the planks and then I'm going to show you the guardrails. Our bridge is almost complete now. We just got to add the guardrail. So we'll take half logs and we'll tap half logs down on every single joint across the whole thing. So now the bridge looks like this and I'm going to go ahead and put down the guardrails. And there we go. Bridge number one is complete. It looks like this to run over it and to look at it from the side is going to be like this. I think it came out pretty good. And now for bridge number two, this one should be a lot easier. And now bridge number two is complete. Doesn't look as good as I thought it was going to look, but that's fine. So now we're going to make some final adjustments to the ground here, to the foundation of this before winter ends. So I decided to go with something like this. I don't know. We can always pull things up, but we can't put them back down. So we'll just leave it like this for now. But now we have a problem, guys. So we need to build the cliffside homes on the left and on the right, and maybe even a third one right up there next to the waterfall, it looks like. And doing this is very difficult, but I have a method that will make it a lot easier, but it's still going to be a big challenge. I hope you guys are ready for a challenge because this one's going to be a little tough. So what we're going to do is get underneath of this ledge and try to gauge where we're going to build. We don't want to build right against the ledge because we need to build supports out from the wall that we're building that will then hang onto the ledge. So we're going to eyeball it as best as we can. We're going to try to find our location. So if I go off to the side, I can see the white up there of the snow. That is the first house that I want to build. So that's the ledge. We're going to look right here. So to put it sideways. We don't want it directly underneath of that. 
We want to move it out some, so I'm going to try putting it somewhere like this. And hopefully this will be uh, close enough to the ledge, but not too close to the ledge to where the struts or the supports will go up. You'll see what I mean. I have an exact process that I can show you that will save you a ton of time, a ton of logs, a ton of effort to do this, but it's still going to be tough. So we can't build off this way, so we'll have to build off that way. Now, from here, we can actually just build the standard supports like this the rest of the way up. Now, we only want to do one single wall at first because if we get the distance wrong, then we are going to have to tear the whole thing down and do it again and again and again until we get the distance exactly, not exactly, but roughly what it needs to be. Just any distance that will work with what we're trying to do. So at this point, things are getting pretty dangerous. You definitely want to save your game every single time before you head up here. So if you need to move a tent closer, go ahead and do it because it's starting to get very dangerous to do this. So the structure is now high enough. You need to go above the ledge, not below it. And thankfully, I think I got the distance correct. This might be a tough one for that one, but that one hopefully will work. So now what we need to do is we need to grab some full-size logs, walk down here, and try to lift this up and hope that we don't die. So one or two things will happen. It'll either lift, lift us up with it, which it did not do. But also, um, we didn't take fall damage because there's an animation for doing that. And during that animation, you aren't actually accelerating to the game's, like, code. So we didn't actually fall fast enough to take any damage. So it's actually not as dangerous as you think, at least at this height, to do this. Because we're not falling till right at the end of that animation. So now we have these, and these are amazing. But now we have another thing we've got to attempt to do here, which is put in struts. So it turns out we don't even need a crossbeam. Apparently, I can somehow do it from over here. So if we let me do the other one too, which it does. All right, we are good to go. I'm going to leave that beam for now anyway. But now we could disconnect this, and this thing will still hold up. I mean, I could lift up both, but I know it's going to hold up. So now for the fun part. Now we can expand this massively. So now what we need to do, since we've got a grid locked in that we can actually build from, we're going to expand this grid to the side as best as we can here. And now I have this. I'm just going to have to try to level this out now. So now I have this. It's very ugly, but it doesn't matter. This will get torn up at the end. So now what I can do is I can start building this up layer by layer until we get it even with that other height. All right, so it's all built up now, and we did all of this for a single purpose. Let's see... How many of these struts we can put across so far so good and it looks like we can actually do all of them so now i'm going to grab some half logs and try to put struts on every one of these so unfortunately this last one can't be done because if i do that it props it up like that but that's not actually a log underneath there so i can't put struts on that one the only way i could do this now is if i built this up another layer and then put all the struts down i don't know if i want to do that I'm going to cut my losses and say good enough. Uh, four or three square uh, cliff face is going to be pretty good. So now for the reason we built this whole other layer is we can do another layer of struts like this. And that would let us make a much larger home on the side of the cliff. So now we have this and I can start putting down floors and start building this out. So the first house came out looking like that, which I think is pretty good. Once we remove the supports, that, that'll look really, really cool. Let's take a quick look inside of the building, see what was built. So inside here, we have the bedroom at the first floor. We go to the second floor. There's a dining room with some storage. We have this beautiful view from these chairs, although it's really bad in winter and spring and summer it'll look way better. Go up to the third floor and we have an attic up here. But now we have some serious issues that we need to deal with. So first off, how do we access that once the supports are gone? Second, we need to make at least one more of those. And then another issue that I have is I would like to be able to connect the house on the left with a house on the right using rope bridges. So there's a bunch of crazy things that we're going to have to do to make this work. I really want to keep the beauty of the waterfall intact. So what I'm going to have to try to do is the exact same thing that I just did, but closer to the waterfall just for one point that I can connect rope bridges to. But that still doesn't solve our other issue, which is building the other house, which is going to be a whole nother can of worms. It's going to be a disaster trying to figure that one out. So now I need to try to do the same thing as before, but this time the angle is a little different. So I'm going to want to rotate the log to try to match that angle as best as I can. That maybe we'll try here, I guess. And if not, we're going to have to tear the whole thing up and do it again. 
we are really far up here now, and I didn't think it was going to happen, but I got my first glimmer of hope that this might actually be possible. All right, so here's the situation. We can't do the top one, but we can do this one now. So maybe, just maybe, there's a way. Maybe if I build up another layer, can I, can I pull this one out? I can't pull this one out. So uh, it looks like, unfortunately, I'm going to have to tear this whole thing down and then try again from a slightly different angle, slightly further back or something like that. But wait, before I tore down, I tried going one layer higher and it lets me do that. So it's going to be weird, but I guess I can make this work. Well, guys, we actually did it. So I had to do struts on every one of these so I can later remove the supports. And as I look at this one, now we have a level base to build on up here for our rope bridge. That is actually amazing. I'm so glad I got it the first try. That's why you want to take your time, try to level it out, get like the right angle and stuff, get the distances right, do as best as you can on that first shot or else you may have to tear down and do it multiple times. But this will work. We can use this. But now we have the problem of we need something else to connect this to. So we're gonna have to just build another one on the other side of the waterfall. On top of that, I would like for this to go slightly further out from the waterfall so we don't have to walk right through the waterfall. So I'm actually going to build up a second layer out real fast that's guaranteed to work now and then tack it onto this one. So I finished the job and I just realized, will a rope bridge even reach that far? Oh my god, what a relief. Okay, I can attach it to pretty much anything I want on this structure. So we, we are all clear for takeoff on this. Well, that was fun and all, but now I have another huge problem. How are we going to solve this one? Look at this. I got to I gotta find a way to get something to stick out this far over here so that that rope bridge can come over without running straight through the waterfall. But I better get to it fast because I'm, this might be the last day of winter and I really need to get the part over the water built like ASAP. Well, life is pain, so I did it too close and there is no way that this is going to work. I'm just going to have to, I think, tear this entire thing down and rebuild it back a little bit. I used these to mark the angle I had before, and I tried to twist it a little bit and move it back a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully this will work. I may try to move it back a little bit more than this even before I go. I readjusted the thing. We got one that we can do right here now, and this one we can't do yet. So I'm going to build up another layer and see if we can kind of get the same thing going as we did on the other side. And sure enough, if I go one layer higher, I can do the same thing as we did on the other side. So I finished the rope bridge across the waterfall, and this thing is insane. This was a total pain in the butt, but hey, it turned out unbelievably cool. I am super, super happy with how beautiful this thing looks. So now we have another problem, though, which we really got to figure out, which is... I don't really have room for a house over here now, so I'm just gonna build a grid over here on the side of this and hope that I can somehow turn this into a house. We'll see if I can attach anything else to that wall. Things are starting to look really good here. I am gonna be able to expand it, but I had to do some crazy stuff here. I'd use a half log over there because the height was wrong. So I was able to do this where I do half log, half log, and then I could square up the height correctly and still have my strut support on this third layer. So I'm actually gonna be able to expand this thing quite a bit thanks to this tech. I am so thankful that this worked out. So this will be our second house, and now we're getting closer to done. But we do have another problem we need to work through, which is we want to build a building at the top of the waterfall, and we're going to have to connect it. Now, I have a really cool idea on how to do that. So I finished the house, and it came out beautifully. This thing is amazing. So we walk in here off the rope bridge. It goes straight into the dining room. There's a bunch of decorations. There's this chair you can sit in. You can look out the view out the window. You can go real quick. Let's go down before we go up. So the next floor down, there's a bed, a little bit of storage. There's more windows to look out. We got down at the bottom, like a storage room. I haven't built yet. I put a zip line in here temporarily that we can get back up with if we want to. And then there's this rope that'll just skip all the floors and go straight up to the top floor. And the top floor is also really cool. We got another bed up here. And we have these two chairs, which give you a beautiful view of the waterfall. Both these chairs have a good view of it. Then out the back of this floor is something really amazing. This is where things get really crazy. We're not done with it yet, but it's going to be insane. So we're going to go up here. There's the attic we can't access. And up here is the roof. You've no idea how difficult this corner was, by the way. It was, it was a nightmare. Anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is right here, make with a rope a rope bridge connection from here up to there where we build the house on top of the waterfall. So now we have to make a decision. Do we do the house down there or do we do the house up there? I got to do one, then the other, and then I got to clean all this up. I think I'm going to start the house up here because it's going to be more challenging. Uh, but either way, we're going to get to them both at some point in the next, you know, two to three minutes here, video time. So let's go ahead and get started on this top one. 
So for now, I'll just make this death trap zip line that'll get me back up here. And then from there, I'll be able to try to figure out what I want to do up here. At this point, I'm just going to try to keep it simple. I'm just going to try to build somewhere over here to over there, maybe using some struts to go over the waterfall, something fancy. Let's just, I'm just going to go ahead and try to build this thing out and then show you what I came up with. So here's what I came up with. So we go up this rope bridge that I added down to the house, go up into here, and it's more of like an outpost balcony overlook type of thing. So you can get a good view there. You can see the waterfall through here. There's a lower floor here that you can use to look out. And you can also see the waterfall again. You can climb back up whenever you want up to this floor. And then right here, there's another one right here that leads up to here. Another overlook. Great view from here. And then you climb up to the top to this top area, which is like the best overlook of the entire thing. Beautiful views. It's just a really cool structure. I'm really happy with how it came out. But now the next big issue. We got to try to build that house. I put down the floor and I think the best option for building this house is a fast forward building montage. And I'm done. All right, let's check this thing out. It's actually one of the most symmetrical, if not the most symmetrical building I have ever built. So this is just for me to set zip lines on later on that will go into the water so we can get out of the water more easily. We go up this, it's a symmetrical staircase that goes to either side. Still gotta clean up all the random building pieces I left behind. You go to either side and then you can go up to this, which lets you go up this rope ladder. There's a symmetrical rope ladder on the other side. Get you up onto the roof. And then you'll do another rope ladder to get up to here, which this is where all of these zip lines are going to plug into. So any of the zip lines that we take into any of these buildings, they're all going to come back to here. Ideally, I'm going to connect all three of these buildings to this. But we have another serious problem that I need to deal with. I got to get rid of all these supports, guys, and it's going to suck. So I'm going to go ahead and get that over with. Before we do it, though, check out how awesome this place looks at night. This place is really, really cool. And here it is, the final product. Let's go ahead and do the grand reveal. So let's start off with the house. I've made some changes since you last saw it. So we go into here. It's a very open style, very underfurnished right now. We have an actual pier over here with this thing, which we can use in order to get out of the water. If we fall in, we can just use zip lines to get back out of the water. And then inside, we have a symmetrical staircase. You can come up from either side and then go in either direction. And then you go up and around, and you can go up to one of these, which leads to this rope. And there's one on the other side as well that you can use. So this will climb you up into a second space, which then lets you climb another rope. That will then take you all the way up. You'll have to ignore it. That one was bugged out. It was unfortunate we couldn't put a triangle, whatever new piece in there. Now we get up to here where we can either take zip lines to that house or that house. And I added this bridge to connect us over to the bigger house over there. So the first zip line will take us over to here. And I put a door on this so I could lock it if I wanted to. And inside of here, you've already seen this earlier in the video, but this is the first house. I'm going to climb up so we can check out the rope bridge. So we're going to go over to here and there's this beautiful rope bridge that goes out and lets you see the waterfall from the front. You could even stand in it if you wanted to. It's lit up very well at night. Uh, you can look down, beautiful view from up here. And then we're going to go over into here and inside of here is the other house. I'm not really going to tour this house at all because we've already gone through it multiple times. So let's go ahead and go up to here now and then we can take this rope right here in order to get up onto the roof and also to peek into the attics. And then up on here, we can follow this rope bridge in order to get up to the house at the top, which is more of a, an outpost, a tower, a viewpoint, something like that. And then we can take this up to here. And if we wanted to, we could just go up there. We could jump over and go over there if we wanted to. Or we can go ahead and climb up to the tallest tower on this outpost and have a beautiful view of our surroundings. This place is just absolutely breathtaking. Very beautiful. I'm very happy with how it came out. And when we're done here, we can take a zip line back down to the house. So turned out really well. Uh, this thing was enormous amount of work. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the most ambitious project yet. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, I do need your help. Just hit the like button, subscribe, leave a nice comment, all that stuff to boost the algorithms because this took so long that like, I need these videos to do good or else it's just not economical. I have to make, like, make smaller videos instead because this took an unbelievable amount of time. You guys have no idea. So again, if you want to support me, just like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, also, another thing you can do to help, just check out the description. There's tons of other helpful Sons of the Forest videos. There's building guides, building tips, how to build other cool things like this. Uh, just go through that description, find another one that you want to watch, and go watch it. And that also boosts the algorithms, helps me out a lot, and might even help you out too. But yeah, this has been my Sons of the Forest waterfall-based cliffside house guide. I hope this thing helped you out. Uh, it's super cool. It turned out very, very good. I'm very happy with how it went. Now you know how to build a waterfall base on a cliffside in Sons of the Forest.